Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting tutorial. Another little side project. You know it's not a big unit we're uh, painting here. It's not uh, a tank. It's not even something that's going to move around on the tabletop. It's a panther term for Berlin. An interesting side project. I find side projects are good to help me get through the big battalions, you know, the, the many, many dozens and dozens of tanks that we paint here at Panzer Schuller. Side projects help keep things fresh, keep your painting mojo going and allow you to change things up. So let's get started. Here is the turret in its sort of raw plastic form. What you can see here is a spare Panther G turret, though you, of course you can always just use a turret from one of your tanks that you're not using in the game and attach it to a base and you'll see how we're going to make the base. This is a Panther G turret. You know the, the Panther terms they tended to be a little bit in most cases like um, purpose-built so it wouldn't probably be a Panther G but I'm using what I've got but to make it look a little bit different and a bit more like a Panther term perhaps in at least a sort of improvised way as I've changed the cupola and given it a early tiger or possibly even early panther. I think that might be an early panther marks too. I'll be the panther D. And it makes it look a little bit less like a turret that's just been taken off a tank and stuck into the ground. I've removed those tie downs on the side as well, folks. So it will have a smooth side when it's finished. So the base is using a smooth, large and medium base. The medium base I've cut down to size. Now, you could use the cutout from the panther hull, the spare panther hull you get, but it's too small. You know, the, the, the turret overhangs it at many points. So it's fine as a mounting point, but it's not going to look like a dug in panther term. This arrangement, you know you can see that the turret is rotating on what is supposed to be the top of the crew compartment buried in the ground and it works quite well. And it's very simple, I mean I've just cut it to size, glued it on and you can see how rough that hole is, it looks like a, made by a Panzerfaust or something. Just drill that through, cut the tab on the bottom here to the right height and we're good to go. Now I'm ready to add the street texture to this, cobblestones and such likes. And you can see here I have a hell of a lot of spent, well these are actually 88 shells, but I'm going to use them, if you imagine, round, probably around this side, you know, where the hatch is and where the, um, the ammo loader's hatch is. Probably have them around here on top of the cobbles to show all the discarded shells to make it look as though it's been really, really busy. So next step is going to be making the surface very simple, folks. You see this whole process is really quite simple. Cutting the cupola off with the rotary tool and adding this one on is probably the most awkward bit of the whole process. So on to the next step, which is milliput. I'm scoring this to help give the milliput something to bite into. Now, if you don't have these old style bases, then I'm sure you can improvise, um, you know, one of the new style bases with the holes filled in with a bit of milliput or some other filler. I'll do just as well. MDF bases, perhaps. And then this bit here, if you don't have this smooth old style um, medium base, then a bit of plastic hard will do the trick. But here we go, we've got some milliput mixed up. Let's not make it too thin and apply it. You can also use green stuff to create the surface. In some ways green stuff is easier to work with than milliput. It'll hold the shape a little bit better to begin with, for instance, before it's dried, but it's also a lot more sticky and it's a lot more expensive as well, you know. Milliput's a lot cheaper and for what is basically a simple, almost like a filler type job that I'm doing here, I recommend that you just use milliput. 
Then there's some very simple basic sculpting done here folks. You're just making some basic cobblestone shapes. I'm using a couple of tools so that I can make the shape but then sort of round off the edges a bit so they don't look like sharp squares because remember cobblestones are worn rounded surfaces. They might be sort of square in general terms but we don't want lots of sharp corners. Once the surface has been completed, I'm going to cut out a few of the cobblestones so that we can create the impression of some that have been knocked out, blasted out, and it'll help give the surface a bit more variety. I would leave the milliput 24 hours to fully cure. Now I am going to go to green stuff to create the loose cobbles that are sort of circling the mounting point of the panther tomb. When you're making something of a defined shape, green stuff is better than milliput because it is, it's a bit tougher, it's a bit harder, so it keeps the shape. You can push against one side and not deform the other side and such likes. Though what we're doing here is really simple as you can see, we're just going to cut the basic shapes of cobbles, keep them in scale for what we've done on the base and a scale of each other and apply them to the surface and then get the right shape. Now green stuff is quite sticky, though for some reason it didn't want to stick to the, the milliput during this whole process, but typically I will make sure there's a tiny little bit of water, just dampness on whatever tool I'm going to use to pick up the green stuff and the surface being dry, it will lift off the tool and stick to the surface I want it to attach to. Now here I'm just going to place these sort of side by side, bearing in mind the dimensions I want for this circle of cobblestones and just break it up, make it look a little bit different as I'm going so it's not too regular. I can also shape these loose cobblestones once they're in place so that the edges aren't looking quite so sharply cut so we can round them off a bit. So that's the cobblestones all in place. The turret can rotate without hitting them. There's a few loose ones put down beside the holes that I cut in the milliput cobblestones. But when I'm looking at this, I'm going, this isn't right. Why is there a circle of cobblestones around the turret? I've made some kind of mistake. I'm going to have to go back to my source picture and make sure I understand what it was I was seeing there because this doesn't really look sensible at all. So at a second look, I realised my mistake. The panther term in the picture was not set flush with the street level, not flush with the cobblestones. Perhaps it's a bit of a rushed installation, maybe it was too difficult to dig down in the urban area, but it's sitting slightly proud and those cobblestones are around the base of the exposed panther term and the earth that is beside that. Therefore I'm going to add a little bit of height. I've taken another of these smooth medium bases with the ends cut off and tucked in underneath and I'm going to glue that on top of the current mounting point point. and as you can see I have drilled uh, a hole. It didn't quite go in the middle unfortunately folks but I've drilled a hole there for the turret to mount as it would have in the original configuration. I'm going to do some rough work with milliput here to build up the sides. I'm going to fine tune that later with some basing material. But just now I just want milliput to hold it in place and to get a bit of a slope going up. It's not a big slope at all folks, going up to the, the flat surface. Now make sure that you're putting the new base on really flat folks. You know, double check it see what looks with the turret on it, turn the turret around with a big long barrel will help uh, illustrate any problems with levelling. I didn't get it level quite when I first put it on and had to go back and tweak it a little bit. And that's us done with the base for just now. We can set it aside, let everything dry and then move on to some painting. Now we're on to some painting and I'm using my controversial some people might just say wrong, red, red oxide. It is in classical terms a lot more brown than this, but from what I've seen 
in modeling projects you know the kind of projects that inspire me to want to do similar things it's much more in the red spectrum especially towards the end of the war when pigments have gone a lot more strange and hard to find and weird replacements getting used and that is the approach I'm going to take here as Slarty Bardfast said in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy I'd rather have fun than do it right you can see me working on a King Tiger turret here folks check the Painting Flames of War playlist you'll see the Berlin King Tiger project that I did using this camo and so many other weird and wonderful colours it's a very interesting project so what am I doing here folks? well basically I'm working with red and then adding white little bits of white to get a little bit more pink as I'm working towards the highlights so we're going from fairly deep red but not too dark folks up towards a pinkish kind of edge but if you don't like this approach there's plenty of colours you can go out there and purchase on the market folks to get you something that you may feel just a bit more historical and more to your taste next up I'm going to add some camo blotches and I'm using dark yellow 2 here from Tamiya it's my go to dark yellow colour it's a bit brighter than the original dark yellow which is good after the washing and weathering is taken into account but you can get a slightly darker finish by taking the original dark yellow I'm basing the camo pattern here on the internet picture that I found and spraying it soft edge that's what it seems to be in the picture being careful not to get too much over spray because I want that strong contrast between the red and the yellow after the airbrushing I've also hand brushed the barrel using a grey primer and the muzzle brake using a really quite distinctive sort of middle stone colour from the Vallejo range and that gives another great contrast to the look of the, the wacky camo on the turret I then gave the whole thing a very light coat of gloss varnish this is not so much for protection folks it's just to give the surface a nice smooth finish to help capillary action for the wash that we're now going to apply as you can see I'm applying a pin wash so I am taking my wash and a thin brush applying it to the features panel lines, details, raised areas, hatches and letting the wash just flow around all the features sticking to those areas as much as possible so I've got a really nice sharp bright finish this is my preferred wash much more so than just covering the whole thing in a dark wash because then it just dulls everything down and the colours that we started with are going to be nothing close to the colours that we're going to see in the finished product the most common type of pin wash used for this is an enamel product but I'd prefer not to use that for a couple of reasons first of all is because it is quite smelly and I can find myself painting washes all day long if I've got a large commission to work on so working with an acrylic product is just a lot better for me I feel to be an effective pin wash the product needs to have a low surface tension and good capillary action and you don't normally get that with gloopy acrylic washes acrylic paint tends to be a lot more harder to thin than enamel paint but the product I'm using is from Meg Ammo and I highly recommend it to anybody that wants to try an acrylic wash I'm using the dark brown wash here but as you'll see I use other washes for the streaking and the weathering so it's very versatile too I try to take as much care as possible when I'm applying my wash so that you have as little clean up as possible now it takes a bit of practice regardless of the products you're using to get nice sharp washes put down 
as cleanly as possible. So if you're new to this, don't get frustrated, stick with it and you'll get there. And I also clean up the wash straight away. I don't leave it for a bit as you might see other people doing and then wipe it off with a cotton bud or such likes. That is still going to allow some of the wash to dry on flat areas that we want to be brighter. So quick clean up after a nice accurate initial pass so to speak will give you a nice bright sharp finish. Once the acrylic wash is touched dry I can start to highlight. Enamel washes I would normally leave till the next day. These acrylic washes you can move on a lot more quickly. Now for the red I've just mixed up a, a version of the, the base colour I've been using just adding a bit more white to the red so I've got a nice bright finish and I'm just hitting those edges you can see I'm almost bouncing the brush along because I don't want to give a neon bright edge I just want a notably highlighted edge uh, highlighted shapes around uh, the, the armour plates and such likes rather than a solid line this isn't edge highlighting in the Warhammer 40k sense On the blotches of dark yellow I'm going to use Iraqi sand and do the same thing but these areas are a lot smaller you know it's not so dominant as the red so you can just pretty much highlight all the edges that are yellow with that Iraqi sand and the result is with the sharp shading and the sharp highlighting we've got some nice clearly defined shapes on the turret is the shapes are really going to pop which is going to help it stand out on the tabletop and we're not doing anything too extreme here either it's quite a natural look and we're just going to help break things up a little by just putting little spots of that pinkish highlight color across the surface too this is to represent a little bit of light chipping but nothing severe folks because this turret has not seen a lot of service at all Next up is some weathering in the form of streaking. It's a common technique to apply to vehicles, whether they are for wargaming or for display, you know, 135th scale kits and so on. So it's a good technique to use. And I'm going to employ the same wash that I did for the pin wash, but I'm going to be using dark brown and ochre. You can see me just putting little spots off, in this case, dark brown, onto the surface where I want to draw the line down by using a damp brush. If you can use a wet brush the paint will just pull across the surface whereas you want to draw it down in a line and you can work that line you can draw it down one side draw it down the other side and then once it's settled and you've got it in the right spot you can just give it a light brushing across the whole surface so that way you're given a soft edge soft edge and then soft surface and you can also at that point determine the length of the streak by just drawing some off at the bottom or drawing it all the way down to the bottom of the panel using different colors for the streaks is good for variety though don't use too many and don't go over the top and apply too many streaks either we are wanting to create accents here rather than dominate the whole mini with the lighter colours such as ochre or the dust colour from this MIG ammo range you can also put a bit of accumulation of dust around the bottom of the turret you know, just apply a bit of the wash around the bottom and then soften it down with your brush you can maybe draw a little bit up, draw a little bit down just to get it soft and irregular and that gives a nice soft edge works particularly well when you have turreted tanks and you want to make a good distinctive line between where the turret begins and the hull ends and that is the turret done folks you can see it there sitting on the base which is now ready for painting so we'll move on to that next I'll start by showing you how I built up the sides of the, the dug in pit so to speak and painted the, all the details I'm going to be using this Vallejo Earth Texture acrylic paste to build up the sides of the panther term as in the exposed earth that has been piled up against the base. Just going to apply it in all these areas between the cobblestones and the base being careful not to get it onto either. You don't want it obscuring the cobblestones and you don't want it obscuring 
the what's going to be a, a clear metallic platform that the Panther turret is sweeping across. It's a very simple process, a simple product to use. If, you, if you've got any big ridges on it, just smooth them down. But you can get a nice grainy, earthy look, which is a lot easier to achieve than trying to create that look using the Milliput. I've given a coat of US olive drab to the entire base. And what you can see so far is I've also given a coat of German grey to the metallic base, the exposed metallic base and then a coat of gloss varnish because we need to give that a bit of protection otherwise it's just going to get scraped to bits. The cobblestones I am painting with a sort of medium kind of grey colour, in this case it's basalt grey and I'm doing what I call a wet dry brush. You know it's not a dry brush as such, I'm not taking the paint off the brush, I'm just making sure that it's not too wet and applying it across the surface so I'm getting a nice solid coat rather than a dusty looking coat. And let's not forget all those loose cobblestones that have been placed around the perimeter of the panther term. To make the surface of the cobblestones a bit less uniform, I'm going to paint in some accents. So some lighter cobblestones. You could also do some darker, but I think the base is looking quite dark. So I think lighter is the best way to go. And I'm going to use a lighter grey, in this case London grey. Now the trick here folks is to do enough for it to be seen, but not too much for it to start to dominate. I'm going to apply a coat of matte varnish to the top of the panther term base at this point here folks. The gloss varnish is great for protection but we really need to dull things down. I painted the earth piled up against the panther term with Panzer Ace's German Tank Crew highlight. German Tank Crew is black but the highlight colour is a brown colour. But I'm sure it works as a good combination for that purpose. But here it also works as a very good earth colour and I quite often use that on all my bases. I'm going to break up the solid colour of the surface with a little wash of US field drab and I'll do some stippling as well just here and there just to get a bit of variety in the exposed earth that's been shown. You could also use pigments to do this folks. For the cobblestone surface itself, I'm going to be using pigments. I'm going to mix them up in a palette here so that I've got the consistency I'm after and then just apply it across the whole surface. This will help A, put a bit of, of earthiness between the cobbles so it's not just that solid shade colour we've got down there but it'll also help put a bit of a filter almost over the, the whole surface which just helps deaden things down and you know, make it a bit more earthy looking. But it's important to remember folks that you do not add too much in one go. It's better to apply some, let it dry, see how it looks, then either remove excess or add some more. Now we're on to the discarded shell cases. Now I painted these individually before I applied them to the base and I just stuck them on for a bit of super glue. I used Japanese uniform because I want to have a bit of a non-metallic colour. I'm now applying a, a very solid highlight, just leaving shade underneath and the highlight is green ochre. Simple process here folks, I'm not going to highlight it any further, the only other thing I would be doing is painting a black dot and the, the open end of the shell casing, but we don't have to go too far with these or spend too much time on them, they are really bright and standing out strongly against the darker base already. And now one last finishing touch folks. I want the metallic top plate to look dusty but I also want it to be durable because the turret could easily be turning around and scraping away things. So you know pigment can be a bit tricky. It, you have to use pigment fixers which is another thing which in themselves can be tricky because they might leave tide marks. So what I'm using is Tamiya Buff. Tamiya is a paint which is very heavy in pigment so when you apply it as a wash it dries really quite grainy and it therefore is a good wash for dust. It's a tricky one to use, I don't recommend it on a, a finely detailed figure but for a job such as this it works a treat. And that's us done folks. Hopefully this has given you a bit of inspiration or a few ideas for yourself 
if you want to make your own panther turn. As I said before, you can easily just take a panther turret off a tank you're not using and stick it on one of these bases, but if you've got a spare one, you can make it look a little bit better by getting a really rough and ready turret. You know, it looks as though it's been picked out of a factory yard and stuck down on the street. You do not have to use the colours that I've used as well, folks, on the turret, but hopefully you can see as well the reasons why I've chosen those colours when you see it sitting on the base here, standing out nice and strong and vibrant. Thanks again for watching folks, thanks to all the subscribers out there and to you folks who just drop in from time to time to see what we're doing on the channel. If you'd like to subscribe, it'll help us build this kind of content, bring it to more people who enjoy painting Flames of War. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button and that means we'll definitely see you guys all on the next one.